Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you drum sound replacement using MIDI. Now, the drum set in front of us, let's see what we have. Now, I want to start off by replacing the kick or enhancing it by mixing a sample in with the real recording. But I want to do it with MIDI or using a virtual instrument plugin. So, we'll start off by duplicating the track. We'll grab the kick, we'll right click it, choose duplicate tracks, let's put it on the top, let's give it a random color just so it stands out, then we'll double click the track to select all the items and we'll go to dynamic split, under view, dynamic split. We could also use the keystroke which is D. That opens up this dialog. From here we could split our items. Now we're going to turn this off, the gate stuff and turn on at transients because we want to split our item by its transients or every time the drummer hit the kick drum. So we'll leave this on. Don't worry about this stuff up here. Go down to here and choose split selected items. Then we'll leave this stuff off as well and make sure this is off. Weeding pad, trailing pad, and fade pad. We're not going to need those. Then down over here, we're going to choose Create chromatic MIDI items from slices. This is going to create a MIDI note for every one of these hits. So we'll choose this. Then we'll go down here and adjust the transient sensitivity. That opens up this dialog. And from here, we could adjust our threshold. Bring it all the way down here to low. It's going to cut in too many places. If we bring it too high, it doesn't cut in any. So we want to find the perfect balance. Now I like to use this option down here, display threshold in media items. When this is chosen, watch what happens. It creates these two lines right here, showing us how to set our threshold. We want to bring them down so they touch these transients. So bring it down to right about here. And now we have dotted lines representing each transient that's going to be cut. So you want to scroll through and make sure they're all going to be chosen. It looks pretty good. So now we can close this and choose split. Now remember, by having this option turned on, it's going to create MIDI notes for each transient. So we'll split, and it created a new track for our MIDI notes. So now we could delete this track. Now let's open up our MIDI item. And it looks like this. Each note represents a transient. Let's zoom in. Each one of these notes represents a kick transient, but they're all different notes. We want to make it one note. So let's select them all, right click over here, and choose Note Properties. From here, we can change the note value, the velocities, the position, and the length. We're going to change the note. I'm going to use C2 because I know that's the kick drum in my drum software, but you can change this to anything you want. And it changed all those notes to be C2. So now we could trigger a virtual instrument plugin with these MIDI notes. Put a plugin on this track. Let's go to Instruments. And I'm going to choose Easy Drummer by Tune Track. But it really doesn't matter which one you choose. Any virtual instrument plugin will work. And that opens up this dialog with a kick sound right here. So let's hear what it sounds like triggered from this MIDI track. It's a bit quiet. So let's open it back up and check out the velocities. They're a bit low. So we'll select them all and bring them up almost completely. Now if you notice, they're not all exactly the same. So it does keep some of the dynamics. So we don't want to lose them all. Let's zoom out and bring it up almost all the way. But we don't want to lose any of those dynamics. So now let's hear it. That's a lot better. Now let's mix it in with the live drums. Before and after. 
Now, something sounds a bit off. Either it's out of phase or polarity, or the timing needs to be shifted. The easiest way to do this is to convert it to audio. So let's right-click the track, go to Freeze, and Freeze Tracks to Stereo. I'm pretty sure this kick drum is a stereo sound. And that's going to turn it into audio, which will make it easier to see. So now we can zoom in and compare it to the live kick. And we can see this is going down and then up. This is going up and then down. So we want to flip the polarity on our sample. So we'll double click it, open the properties, and invert the phase or polarity right here. Now it looks like this. So now we could shift it to line up better with the kick. What we should also do is check each sample because each one's not going to be perfectly lined up with the live kick. So to do this, we're going to split this audio. Hit D, turn off the option down here, go to our sensitivity and set it up to split all these kicks. Split it, and now each transient is a separate item. So now we can zoom in and compare the timing and use the keystroke control right bracket on PC or command right bracket on Mac, which will go to the right side. So you could shift this one over a bit, do it again, and just go through the whole song doing the same thing. It's a bit tedious, but it's worth it in the end, because each kick has to be lined up perfectly with the live kick. And we're done. We could hear it back. And it sounds a lot better. Before, the sample had some nice punch. And it mixes nicely with the live drums. Now, if we're doing a snare drum, it's a bit different because a snare drum is more dynamic. Let's make these smaller. Now let's do the same thing with the snare. Let's duplicate it. Put it up here, give it a different color. Let's make this bigger. We'll split it, change the sensitivity. And for this one, we want to make sure we get all these hits. There's a drum fill right here. So let's bring it down, grab all those hits, and then we could separate it the same way. But we're going to turn on create chromatic MIDI item from slices, which is going to create MIDI notes from these transients. Split it. Again, we could delete this track. Let's take a look at this. With all these MIDI notes, we'll select them all, then right click and choose no properties. We're going to change this to D2, which is the snare that I'm going to use. But again, you could change it to whatever you prefer. And all the notes change. Now we should take a look at the velocity. While it's not perfect, it does show some dynamics. But let's bring it up to almost full. Let's see what that sounds like. We'll put a virtual instrument plugin on this track. Let's use Easy Drummer again. And this time, we'll use the snare. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's hear it on the track. Now let's work on this fill right here to make it sound more natural. It's right over here. Notice the dynamics aren't as perfect. The real snare is a lot more dynamic. It slowly gets louder. So let's tweak that. Let's bring this one down and then draw on PC, hold on control, on Mac, hold on command, and then just draw up like that. Looks pretty good. See that in solo. Now that sounds pretty natural because of a feature in Easy Drummer. When you hit the snare multiple times, it randomizes the hit. To make it sound more natural. If we turned it off right here, the hits sound more like a machine gun. 
Now, if you're using a sampler that doesn't have this, here's how I would do it. Go back to this. You could change the notes, move this down, to be different notes from the player. See, right here is a snare, but so is this one. So let's take the second hit here and move it up. Do the same with this one and with this one. So that should sound more natural. Before, sounds like a machine gun. After, sounds a little more natural. But again, with this software, we could turn this on and it doesn't matter. Now we want to do this with every fill. This one looks good. Let's do the same thing with this one. Bring this down, then draw it up. And go through the whole song just like that. And we should also do is check the phase. So again, we'll choose this, go to freeze, freeze tracks to stereo, and that turns it into audio. So we could zoom in nice and close and see how it lines up. Now you notice it's completely out of phase. This is going up and down, this is going down and up. So it's going to create a lot of phase issues. So let's double click this one, invert it, and now it looks like this, a lot better. We could shift it around, make sure it lines up, and again we'll split it to line up each note. Turn this off, adjust the sensitivity. Then split it, and we could zoom in and check each hit. This one looks good. Bracket over. Move this one over a bit. This one looks good. Looks pretty good. And now if we hear it back, it should be much tighter. Without it, and with it. And all the fills sound nice and natural. So anyway, that's drum sound replacement using MIDI in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!